Let's dive in with Amy in Russellville. How do you recommend dealing with short and midterm savings that don't have tax advantaged accounts like saving for a child's wedding or your next car? Should you invest or high yield save? Amy, thanks for the question. I think the first thing you got to ask yourself is what is the timeline here? Everything when it comes to making decisions about how to invest, whether to invest, whether to keep principal safe or whether to risk it should be determined on a time horizon basis. Now, Retirement is one of those things that's a little easier to deal with, right? If you're 35, Amy, and you know you want to retire at 65, you know your time horizon, right? You've got 30 years. It can be a little more difficult when you're talking about saving for a child's wedding or even your next car, okay? So we realize there's a little bit of wiggle yeah. room you have to have there. And, and even I'll circle back to the retirement aspect because a lot of people coming up to their time of retirement, let's say they're 63 and they're going to retire at 65, then they're thinking, I have a short-term time horizon. You do for some of those dollars, but some of them even then, you're not going to use for another 20 or more years in retirement. So there's still even then some portion that's going to be short-term and some portion that's long-term. But let's get out of the retirement realm for just a minute and talk about, uh, as Amy has asked, about vehicles and weddings. Um, so let's talk about that time horizon that Scott mentioned. So on a vehicle, how how soon before you're going to need to replace that vehicle? Uh, in in my family, uh, our phrase is we keep until the until the wheels fall <laughs> off. You know, um, we have a tendency to do that. Our last vehicle we kept right out a decade, and we've we've done that a couple of times. Uh, not to say that we do it ev with every single vehicle, but for us it usually is quite a bit of time. And so what we'll do is create what's called a sinking fund for that. And basically, while we are driving a paid for vehicle we are making a car payment to ourselves and just stacking that money up and for us we're doing it in a, in a savings um, type of vehicle so she asked about a high yield savings vehicle mm -hmm. That has been our choice, but if you're saving for something that is for sure a longer term than a five-year period, then you may want to actually invest, but we usually don't do that with vehicle money because it might be shorter than you think. Right. I'll, I'll use an example. In our family, we were stacking money up years ago for a future vehicle, and then my husband got T-boned. Mm. And the future vehicle that was going to be, you know, still another three or four years down the road all became a next week vehicle just at the drop of a hat. And so you never really know in, in that realm how soon you're talking about. So I would tend personally to go to more of a high yield savings for that, even if you think your time horizon is a little bit longer because you don't want to risk the fluctuation in the market. Yeah, and I would agree with that, too, especially in the environment we're in right now. It can be a lot easier to yeah. be satisfied with a high yield savings yeah, when interest yeah, rates are you know, sure. north of 5%. So I think, Amy, when we're talking about the car, that's a great bit of advice there to think about that in high yield savings because of the unknown potential of uh, the time horizon being collapsed into a shorter time frame. And I love the idea of putting a payment uh, into it so that you can kind of predict where you're going to be at a, at a certain point in the future. Now... I I'll talk a little bit more about vehicles before we transition on this. Um, we just bought a vehicle for uh, my husband, and we had the, the full amount put back to be able to pay it in cash. And we've done this at other times in the past. You often, if you're buying new, and, and we've bought used a lot as well, but on this one we wound up buying new, and you often will actually get a better deal if you finance it for a period of time. Yeah. So we financed it for just a few months. In fact, we just, just paid it off, even though we had all of that money it saved us yeah. what i'll just ca call a comma check meaning it, it saved us enough money in the price of the overall deal uh, just to finance it for a few months which feels really weird when you have yeah. the money to pay it yep. um, and just the way i was raised you know don't have a car payment but you're kind of playing the game there a little bit uh -huh. as well so. I've, I, I've the last couple of cars i bought i've been flabbergasted that cash is no longer king it's not when it comes in the car in the car business and yeah. you know obviously we understand that they're getting a little bit of a, a kickback there from the banking or the loaning or the lending right. institution to be able to do that to draw that interest but i do the same thing i said i say well give me give me the interest rate mm -hmm. uh, give me how much you're saving me and then i do the math right yeah how, how much am i going to pay in interest over the next three months uh -huh. well the first question i ask them is 
how much can I pay off in month one? Uh-huh. <laughs> because, yeah. Because yeah. I'll knock it down to $100 right. if yeah. I have to, right? Uh-huh. And then, then pay interest on that $100. Uh, but that's a great idea uh, to take advantage of that. Because typically, it, every time I've done it, same thing. It has been a comma check difference yeah. um, in the savings on the price of the vehicle. So good advice there. All right. So on the wedding side of Amy's question, that timeline you would think would be a little bit easier especially if you know the age of your child. Now, you don't know right. when your child's going to get married, but you know it's not going to be until X date, right? So if your child is younger, I mean, if you're really starting to think about saving for a child's wedding and they're 10, 11, 12 years old, then yes, I think investing it makes sense because you're probably at least on a 10-year time horizon, right? My daughter got married at 20, which is young by today's standards, just in January. So let me give you my example. Now, I had been saving and investing not specifically – for her wedding, but for these intermediate goals, right? Mm-hmm. This was in a non-retirement account. Amy mentioned the, the the accounts that don't have tax advantage status. So this was not for my retirement. This was, this was for generally whatever I've got to deal with in the future. And I shouldn't say I had to deal with a wedding. <laughs> deal what, with that. Whatever I, whatever I had to plan for uh, in the future. Grateful to do it. Great guy. And I had no problem with, uh, with my new son-in-law. But I began to save and invest that money for a potential time horizon that I knew was down the line in the future. Now, when Abby, my daughter, began to get serious, and certainly by the time she got engaged, that money was out of the market right? It was on to the sidelines and into some CDs in my case, uh, and then eventually um, uh, a money market mutual fund uh, to get that. And and I was fortunate again that the interest rates were favorable, so I was still drawing some interest on that money. Well, it it went from a generic future need, whatever it might be, to a specific with a date need. Mm -hmm. And, And that's when you pulled the trigger on it. Yep. And put it aside because we knew we... And in, and in her case, you know, the other part about that is how much, right? How much do you save for the wedding? I had a budget in mind. We, we went at this a little bit differently than I think a lot of people do, rather than have a pile of money on the sidelines and then go ask the daughter how much they're going to need and piece that out over a certain amount of time. I told my daughter when she got engaged, I said, here is the budget. This is X amount for you to spend any way you like on preparing for your wedding. I put it into a joint bank account with her name and my name on it so that she could have the she could control the purse strings. Right. I have oversight of it. I'm seeing it. But I had hands off on it. This was her deal. And I even told uh, her and her fiance at the time, if you guys choose not to blow the entire budget on the wedding, then you've got money for the honeymoon or you've got money to invest or you've got money for a car. Yep, The money is handed to them to use as they see fit. So I thought it was a great financial lesson for them to learn to prioritize mm-hmm. and to budget. And it worked out well. They they came in a little uh, short of what, or they kept a little bit more than what they needed. Uh, so they used that for their honeymoon. So yeah. it worked out really well for them. And then I got to share that story with a client recently because he was in the same boat. He had a non-tax advantage account with us here that he had begun investing in growth mutual funds uh, had done it before he actually became a client here and told me when he became a client here at Gen Wealth that that money was for his daughter's wedding someday. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. was probably, I'm trying to think how long he's been a client, probably four years. So at that time, he didn't know when that time horizon was going to look like, but he'd been growing it for some period of time. Well, he talked to me last fall, same thing. My daughter's going to get engaged, uh, the, son, the son-in-law, future son-in-law, came to talk to me over the holidays. He's telling me he's going to pop the question soon. What do we need to do? Yeah. Same thing with him. It's like, <laughs> we, well, I, don't, I can't help you on the what do we need to do with the wedding part. You're right. But the financial side was we need, we need to get out of these growth mutual funds. Right. And we need to park it into something safe to protect the principal, not put it at risk because we know that you're going to need it in a short, appear, short period of time. Scott, one of the things that we see people do with these types of future purchases or expenses like weddings and vehicles is many times they tend to mix this uh, with their emergency fund. Yeah. And, and I will say for us, it is all in the same account currently. Um, but it's not in in our minds mentally. It is not the same dollars, but because we I've got an Excel spreadsheet that I'm tracking for future purchases 
and for the uh, for the portion of it that is our emergency fund. And so at any given point, I can look at the overall balance of the account, but I also know what in that account is our emergency fund. Now, some people, if they if they did it that way, Scott, they would wind up dipping into their yeah. emergency fund for other things. Uh, we're just not wired that way. So for simplicity's sake it, it, it sake, it made it easier for us to have it all in one account that we're tracking. But whatever works for you to be able to keep that separate. Mm-hmm. And, and John and I talked about this last week with regard to emergency funds. That's got to be a baseline. And it's and the reason is the reason you don't dip unless it's an emergency. Main reason is is because if you go below your threshold, you got to get it back there, right? Yeah. You've got to find a way to get it back there. That's a minimum for sure. Great question, Amy. Spent a lot of time on it. Hopefully it was helpful to you. And if you've got questions, you can call or text them to us at the following number, 501-381-5228. Again, it's 501-381-5228. Whatever money-related is on your mind, just call, leave a voicemail, or shoot us a text at that number. You can also send an email to show at getreadyforthefuture.com, and maybe you'll hear your question answered on the air. 